Okay, last but not least, I have my miscellaneous tab. So this is all the rest of the items that don't really have a confirmed spot in the book, but are also important to mention. So we'll just go through these. So there's a quick one here about avoiding basement flooding. So again, that's going to talk about the drainage on the outside. It's going to talk about your sump pump, maintaining all of those systems, making sure that you're protecting the perimeter of your house. The next one is measuring the humidity in your home. Now, Kyle briefly talked about the HRV when we were standing in the hallway doing the video there. What an HRV is, and I, he, he uh, maybe missed this in his explanation, but what an HRV is, is it's a system that we install in homes to move the air because our homes are sealed so well, there's no more natural ventilation. So stuff's getting caught in our house, right? The air is getting trapped, moisture is getting trapped. So we had to implement a system to actually move that air around. And an HRV is building code. It is a requirement these days. So you'll see like the little vents at the top of your wall. Those are your HRV vents. And when you hit the button to turn the HRV on, those start sucking air out of the house and you'll notice that fresh air is coming in through the vents. So what's actually happening is it's sucking in through that vent and it's going down to the HRV and it's mixing the air, it's removing the heat from that air and pushing the stale air outside. Then it's sucking fresh air in, mixing in that heated zone and then it's pushing back through your house. So it's an efficient system because it's not causing your furnace to have to kick in so often in the winter months when the air is minus 50 outside pulling into a plus 22 house on the inside so i hope that i hope that makes sense but that's essentially what your hrv does it's it it's exchanging your air it's mixing with heat and it's trying to try to remediate any excess moisture in your house or stale air or whatever so if you're cooking if you're showering if you're doing more laundry those are things that you want to manage um, when we turn possession over you, we, we give you a little humidistat that helps you manage your humidity levels in your house. I would try to pay a lot of attention to that if possible. Um, re good relative humidity for winter is like 35-ish. It may or may not agree with what's happening in your home. So everybody's house is a little different because everybody lives a little bit different. So how many people live here? How often do you bath or shower? How much laundry, how much cooking? Because all of those things are bringing more humidity in. So it's just something to keep in mind. It's something to monitor. If your humidity is raising and it gets too high and you're not using the HRV to balance it out, you're gonna notice water on the windows if the temperature outside drops more than it is right now. And like it's very mild this year so that you're not noticing a lot of that but they call it the dew point. And the dew point is the difference between the temperature inside and the temperature outside. If that has too much of a variance, then it has, your, if there's excess moisture in your home, it's going to condensate on your windows and it's going to freeze. And that's what happens. So managing the humidity inside is what prevents you from having water on your windows and like locks freezing up outside, things like that. So. If you have more questions about that, you can always call to chat. Um, both Eric and I would love to chat with you about that. Um, again, if you've owned a new home before, these are things you already know. If you haven't and you wanna know more, just give us a call. So this one talks a little bit more about measuring the humidity in your house, why it's important. So I have a third party document here too that ties in perfectly with this conversation. And this one talks about why high humidity costs run your house at a very high cost. Like an overall operating cost is gonna be very high if your humidity is super high. Um, it's an interesting document, I would give it a read. I, I know that um, my husband, for instance, he, he really likes things very humid if our house isn't like 50. He's complaining that his lips are chapped and his nose is dry and those kinds of things but the humidity level for the home is going to be much different than what's comfortable for you. So there is definitely a sense of, you need to figure out what that is for yourself, where your comfort is, and does it work for the home systems? Because over time, if you're always gonna have water on your windows and it's always gonna be dripping and running, you're gonna notice issues with expansion of your, basic, your, your, sorry, your casing on your windows you could have mold like building on the jams of the windows, things like that. 
And then you're bringing other toxins into your environment too that aren't really great. So there is a balance, you just have to find it. I'm gonna start and stop again.